Hello everyone, it's Mary. I'm so excited to bring this video to you. Today we are going to be talking about some money saving, some time saving, some sanity saving hacks, and a little bit of organization kind of sprinkled throughout. So I'm really hoping that this video helps you, uh, whether you're a new crafter or a veteran crafter, uh, but just kind of helps you, you know, skip a few steps here and there to kind of make the process go a little bit smoother. So let's get into the fun. Okay, let's start off this hack show <laughs> with some ideas on how to make things a little smoother. So the first recommendation is get something that has compartmentalized little areas where you can put alphabet letters. I have so many alphabet dies, but I find myself hesitant to use them because I feel like, if especially the ones where you roll them through and you get the whole alphabet all at once, where are you gonna put all those extra letters? So I like to keep all the different fonts, but per letter in these little containers, and I label them with these stickers so that I can just grab out what I need and add them to my projects. So I think it's really, really a very, uh, just a time-saving hack for me. Um, to make sure that I'm able to move a little bit faster. The pulling out a specific alphabet die set every time I want to personalize a card or an envelope or something like that, it just gets tedious. So I feel like if I'm uninspired to make a full card one day, then I can just sit down and kind of do some of these things that I know my future self will certainly thank me for. So I did this for all of my alphabet letters. Now I plan on going back and doing a whole set in white. And again, there's so much space in those little areas that you can just keep adding different colors of letters. These particular cases are from scrapbook.com, but just look around, go to the thrift store even, and look around to see if there's something that you can use similar to this. It doesn't even have to be squares, it could be little drawers, just something where you can kind of put your letters a little bit better separated out because I find when they're all together, that's another deterrent for me to not want to use them because then I'm sifting through stuff. But if I know I'm just sifting through an entire series of A's, then I'm okay with that. So um, just something to consider here. I wanted to make sure that I included this in this video. I also have a third one for numbers. So two of them take up my letters, one is for numbers, and then this way we're good to go. So I've only gotten through some purple glitter paper and some black, but we're gonna work on that. <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next time saver, and that is to cut up all your cardstock into the pieces that you want uh, all at once. I find that, again, uh, when I have not done this, I've been doing this for a decade, but on the times when I've gotten either short on cardstock or gotten lazy, I really don't want to sit down and craft as much. But if I have all of my card panels already cut out, all my card bases already cut out, then I just feel like that part of the process is done and I don't have to think it. Think about it. So right here, what I'm doing with my Bristol Smooth cardstock is I'm going through and I'm cutting them down to slimline size. I have had A2 size card panels made for a long time. Um, I actually have to sit down and do a whole bunch more of the A2. But for this one, I don't have any uh, slim lines and I love slim line cards. So I just wanted to make sure I had a handful of that to make sure. Now I've been asked what I do with the extra paper and I do keep that for scraps or for little pieces. But for the panels, I like to store mine and label them. You can do this either in just a quick, easy filing system without labeling. You can, I know I've, I have a couple different ways that I do my A2 size in my crafting tour video. I showed that. Um, I picked up something from the thrift store. So you can do that either way. These envelopes are really sturdy. They're from scrapbook.com, but again, you can use just envelopes you get from the Dollar Tree and just stick as many panels in there as you possibly can or no envelopes at all. I just like to label the card stock itself. So I like to know if I'm grabbing for the Bristol or the Accent Opaque 80 pound, Accent 100, watercolor, whatever it is. And so this labeling system helps me. Now I did it on the vertical and the horizontal side because I was unclear at this moment how I was going to actually store them. 
And so I just kind of had the printer out and I just, or the little label maker, and I just went for it. This system can also be used to save uh, time and space and just organize really more on the organizational side. Uh, if you already have some pre-cut stuff for your dies. So right here I have this grass die cut through a whole bunch of different shades of green and I keep them in this envelope. This way I can, and hillsides too. This way if I want to just kind of assemble a card, it's all right there for me. I have some clouds. I have, so it's kind of like the outdoorsy scenes, if you will, um, grass, clouds, and hills. And so I keep all those together. Again, I think I did this on a time when my crafting mojo was kind of low, and I always recommend just do some of these tasks, put on your favorite show, your favorite song, and just kind of, you know, prep yourself. Again, your future self <laughs> will definitely thank you because it just makes the process a lot, a lot easier. So here I've labeled it borders slim, uh, so I know that they are for slim lines. Now I, I know though that I can use this slim line size on a couple A2 size cards as well. So just keep that in mind. Just because they're slim line dies doesn't mean you can't cut that baby in half and use it for two A2 sizes horizontal or vertically rather. So that is a little uh, tip for some organization and just to get yourself ready to go for your future projects. Uh, the last one I'll show you is I also do this with some of those sentiments that I have, the die sentiments where the letters pop out of them. So I could take those letters and just pop them into the first letter organization I showed you, or I can just put them in the envelope, keep them together. All right, let's talk about these stamp sets we get with a ton of coloring images. Um, what do we do with them all? Well, I like to pull them out. I'm more apt to use this stamp set more for different multiple projects if I stamp them all out at once. So my next tip is to grab up your blocks or your stamp and position or whatever you have and stamp those out on some cardstock all at once. What this is going to do is it's going to allow you to have your ready-made images to either color or if you just want to sit down one day and just color, you can pull those out and you can get them ready for a card or, and I'm going to show you a little bit uh, in a little bit what I mean by that, but it just allows you to get more bang for your buck because a lot of times we'll get these wonderful stamps and we'll pull it out, we see one image, we'll make one card, we'll put the stamp away, and then we just spent $15 on a card. And so you wanna get the most bang for your buck here. So I've colored up four, because I'm gonna use those four on this particular project, and I'm gonna die cut all of them, because again, I wanna run this through my die cutting machine one time. I don't wanna to have to pull those dies out multiple times if I don't need to. Um, so I do that and I've, I run them through and, and now I have some spares is what I call. So I have those spares, put them aside and we're good to go. Um, so this is definitely a tip that will save you time, I think, in the long run. Also, just kind of maybe you're looking through all your little pieces and you're like, yeah, OK, let's make a card with this particular thing. So um, just keep that in mind. While I was here, I thought I would show you an additional way to do one of your die sentiments, and that is to put a shadow behind them with some darker cardstock. So that was just a quick sneaking in here with a little bit of a tip or a trick just to give your sentiments uh, something different. Instead of stacking them up all on the same color cardstock, you can actually put a dark color right underneath and offset it just a little bit, and it'll give you this shadow look. So here I'm doing this with the Hello die, and it is um, giving it some dimension as well, but it's also allowing me to have that cute little that cute little background. So while we're here, um, I know this isn't a card making video, but I thought I would show you what I did with those little cuties that I colored up. And I was able to just pull out that slimline panel from already make having it made. I colored it up with some ink, put some glitter in the background, adding some googly eyes. Don't underestimate googly eyes in your life because they add something very special to a card. And also these little ones right here on the green guy, they are the tiniest little eyes I've ever seen. They're just too cute. So that's how I finished off that card. I just thought I would keep that in there just to show you a little bit of fun. 
But on the note of making things in bulk, let's talk about sentiments as well. So here's a clip where I'm showing you, I have all of these sentiments, but I don't feel like pulling off every single one of those off of its sheet and then having to put it back or even doing that one at a time. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take this entire panel of sentiments. I'm gonna lay it down in my stamp and positioner. I am then going to have a um, one of those tape runners and I'm just going to put the tape runner on the back of this. I want this to stick to my, uh, my glass acrylic uh, cover, right? So then I'm gonna close the cover, it's gonna stick beautifully, and now I'm gonna be able to stamp every single one of those sentiments all at once, heat emboss them, and then I'll cut them out again putting on my favorite song, my favorite show, and I can just fussy cut out these or use a paper trimmer or whatever. I'm gonna use some sticky ink here, and uh, you saw me use that powder bag. You wanna make sure that you do that. I'm just going to rub all that in. I like to double stamp, so you didn't, I didn't show you, but I like to double stamp my sticky ink, especially with new stamps. Pour some white embossing powder over that, and then I'm gonna heat set that. Don't mind my little... <laughs> Ladybug vacuum, it's my favorite, I love it. Um, so there we go, and then we have all of our goods. Now, the next tip I wanna move into is storing your extras. Now, maybe you don't have as many extras as I do. In fact, I don't have as many as you see here anymore because I made, so one day I sat down and I made like 25 cards and anything I wasn't gonna use in the future, I just parted with. But I would recommend not doing what you see here. <laughs> I would recommend uh, categorizing your items. So either keeping all of your wintry stuff together, your critters, your words, like try to keep, or themes, break it up by themes. If you find that you're making a lot of birthday cards, um, you know, keep your birthday card stuff together that kind of thing. Because again, when you just want to start assembling cards or you need a quick card, like, you know, someone tells you, Hey, my husband the other day, side note, laying in bed, do you, can you go make, not go make, he said, can you make a card for so-and-so, one of his clients? And I was like, I don't need to go make anything. I have tons already. <laughs> So we're good, but it's just one of those things like you can just throw together a really quick card. So I'm just showing you here as I blabber on that I'm categorizing all my things. I really should have videotaped when I sat down and just put cards together, um, but I just kind of got in the mood to just be creative and not have to worry if it was shutting off on me, you know, all that business. So I just had a good time, but uh, maybe I'll do a video and show you what cards I actually did make from all of this. If you're interested, let me know. I might put that on my Instagram. Um, I think that would be kind of fun. So, all right, enough of this. Uh, recommendation, categorize your stuff. Use whatever uh, organizational thing you want to to capture all of it. This one in particular is, again, from scrapbook.com. They have a lot of really affordable, good organizational uh, type of uh, systems over there. So if you want to check that out, of course, do so. But again, whatever you use, uh, just I'm saying it makes your life easier if you just keep them all together. Okay. Let's move on from this. The next thing I want to talk about is reusing some of your other crafting items. So right here, I am making a uh, shirt with some iron-on vinyl. Now, by the way, all of these video clips are from full videos, so if you wanna check those out, I'll try to link every one below. But anyway, I'm gonna have this leftover piece here, this, this sticky piece from the vinyl, right? So I'm pulling this off, and this is obviously in the shape of a tree. But I did not want to throw this away. A couple reasons. It's awesome. It's really big and it's sticky. So I knew I can get other uses out of it. So I put it aside. Okay. So then I pulled out this piece of wood. We just literally had laying around in the garage and I placed it down on the wood. And remember this is sticky. So this is almost like its own adhesive stencil, but it's not so sticky that it's going to ruin any of your projects. So I placed that down and then I pulled out some of my distress stains and I just decided to have some fun. Now this was all experimental. I had no idea what was gonna come of this, but ultimately I just wanted that outline of the tree. I didn't need to be perfect. I didn't care about that really, um, but I went through and I stained the wood behind. And I just kind of, I'll show you the finished product of this in just a second, but I did that a couple times. I just wanted to get, again, that outline from, uh, from the tree. Now I ended up cleaning it up a little bit with a little bit of an alcohol wipe because it did seep under, 
But in the second project I show you this, it doesn't seep under. Um, and so, you you know, I think it works better on paper than wood. But you can see some of that leakage. I just cleaned it up with an alcohol wipe and then I painted it and here's the finished finished little decor piece for the, for the winter time. Okay, but I also took that same stencil piece, I'm calling it a stencil, it's probably a mask. I took that same piece and put it on a slimline card and I did the same uh, the same thing with it. So um, I just used my sprays and I'm using some watercolor cardstock and um, that coupon's still good even though this video's old. Oh no, 30%, it's only 20% now if you want the, the white mat that I'm working on. Okay, total side note. All right, so I'm just gonna spray that and then I wanna make sure that I pick up all that excess before I pull off that mask so that I can get as clean a look as possible. I think this was my first time playing with distress stains which are like just so fun, just fun and magical and fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clean that up and uh, and then I'll pull it off. And then I just finish off this card. Um, I just make it uh, do a bunch of embellishments on it. And it's kind of cool because sometimes we get stuck in the mindset that we have to use an entire image, but you don't. And I just used half an image here. And so there it is. Okay, so once I heat set that, again, I think I heat set it, yeah, I heat set it before I actually pulled it off because I was afraid it was gonna uh, leak under there. So then a uh, stencil comes off and now we have a really nice mask. So you could definitely tell that's a tree. And then at the end of that video, um, that's how I finished it off. Just use some pops of color, a sentiment that you saw me already cut out all at once and you know, heat emboss. So putting the card together was extremely easy. So that, is a, a reuse kind of hack before you throw out your stuff. All right, let's move on to a lazy hack. <laughs> so this is um, this is a way to save time. You have this beautiful big background. This is one of my favorite stamp sets of all time. I've used it so many times. It's from Hero Arts. Uh, it's something Little Town or something. All that stuff will be linked below. But you can cut out the center of it and only color up that part of it. And now you've saved yourself so much time, but you've also given your card a huge amount of wow because it's going to draw the eye directly into it. Now I happen to use uh, these dies. I believe the, oh, I forget what they're called, but they're um, dies that cut out the circle and the image. So here you can see I'm inlaying that image with some glitter cardstock because I wanted to make this look like it was sort of an ornament. And so I put some foam tape on that, lined it up exactly where it was supposed to go, and now I have sort of the shadow look on top of my card, a really great technique, very simple, and it saves you so, so much time. So that's definitely um, one of those, those tips and tricks I highly recommend. And then I just add my sentiment. You can see I put a little bow at the top to make it look like an ornament, and voila, we have a finished card in a third of the time. So especially with this lovely background. Like I love that background, but it can be very tedious to color in. Um, but yeah, so, all right, let's move on to more coloring ideas. I want to move into a time saver and that is to swatch out your coloring systems. I can't recommend this enough. Now I'm showing you lots and lots of pictures and angles of my Ohuhu markers. They are my alcohol-based markers and it's the full 216 set. And I highly recommend that you swatch your stuff. This will make it so much easier. So what I've done is I've created the 216 set Ohuhu markers brush tip color chart. This time I've done it in more, in more of an order where you can pick up those three or four colors and you can get to coloring. And if you wanna get that, that will be in my Etsy shop linked below. I highly recommend if you have this set of markers, it will save you hours and frustration. Um, so trying to figure out which colors go with which markers. The caps do not talk well with each other. They don't make any sense. The number system doesn't make any sense, it, but they're worth the price. The markers are definitely worth the price. The quality is great and you get a lot of great coloring. So I would recommend that, but I took the time and put this together and I'm hoping that it's helpful for those of you that have already gotten it, um, but check that out linked below. But regardless if you have this marker or any other marker out there, take the time right when you get them to swatch them out and try to figure out what markers go with each other. It just will save you so much time. 
So on the topic of swatching out all of your coloring mediums or your mediums in general, I would highly recommend having one consolidated place for that. For me, I use a large binder. This is a nine by 12 binder and I keep them in page protectors. I do this because I don't want stuff just laying around on my desk. The sun might get to it and it might fade the colors. And so I swatch everything, mica powders, watercolors, metallics, uh, brush pens, uh, stamped or distress oxide, alcohol, inks, so on and so forth. I even um, stamp, uh, excuse me, have the, well, look at, I'm huge Catherine Puller fan. You know that I almost have all the inks. As I was swatching them, I realized I was missing some. Unhappy, have to get those. Though right here, even I have my pops of color. I want to see which ones are shiny, which ones are glitter and so on. And so that's a really good tip. Again, I use a binder system. I also use a binder system for my stencils. And if you have watched any of my videos for any length of time, you know, this is probably one of my favorite organizational hacks. I like to keep them all together. It just makes it so much easier and I'm more apt to use them. Before I did this, they were just in a drawer in a, in a just a hot mess. Pardon me in my robe, this was something specific I did <laughs> on my channel uh, for a slumber party we were having. But right here I'm showing you how I keep them organized in this. This is a six by eight binder. Never mind that it's the softest binder I've ever felt, but that's a moot point. All right, let's move into our last hack of the day, and that is a cleaning hack. So I did show this on my Instagram, and it's a quick reel, but here I'm going to show you again. I picked this little silicone thing up from the Dollar Tree, so probably $1.25. Uh, maybe I got there before inflation, but I just happened to add a little bit of soap on it. And what I'm going to do is clean my brushes. I have not cleaned my brushes in a very long, uh, ever, let's be honest, ever. And so I'm going to do that. Now look at all that ink just coming right off. So I think I used probably Catherine Puller inks, Distress Oxide. I think it was a mix of things. So they were getting kind of junky. So I went in and you could see me rinse out all that ink first. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to scrub it up against the scrubby and I'm going to work the additional ink out of it. And once I do that, um, I'm going to see that it's going to, I mean, I was surprised how much ink I felt like I was rinsing out a paintbrush. There was so much ink in there. So once I do that again, I'm going to just go back and forth until I get it nice and clean. After that, you're gonna see that it looks so much better. And I left them dry overnight and they were fine the next day. So here's just, I'm not gonna go through the process. I'm just gonna show you. That's the before purple. And you can see here me rinsing out the after purple. And um, it's just a good way, take care of your brushes. Um, it's just, I really feel like they're gonna last a little bit longer this way. Okay, so I hope that video was helpful and you got some good new tips and tricks here and there. While I have you, I do want to share with you that I did start a new uh, YouTube channel. It's called Live Well. You can join me over on that channel below. It's basically all things wellness and also sharing my wellness journey um, over the last couple of years. So I'd love to have you join me on that platform. And then in other news, I now have a crafting only Instagram and I'm trying to build that up because I want to be able to use that as an opportunity to communicate with you when I get flash sales that come by, when I find money saving tips, tricks, hacks, reels, uh, some short videos. I'm really trying to build that up um, and I'd love for you to join me there. So you'll find the, the link to my Instagram, Mary Polanco Designs below as well. And then just my link tree link, which basically is where we can connect on all other platforms. So I will see you all in the comments down below and in the next video. Bye.